So when you traveled with those papers, did anybody else travel with you? Or is this my driver? But he would let me out and get the White House and the money. Proceed down the ladies' office usually. Although I did carry uh, almost daily called the presidential law, which broke the fighting down all over the world in the utmost detail. The president received this every day. I would get on an elevator and go to a lower level in the White House and hand it into the war room. Door to be opened about this wide. The person authorized, because I had to leave these only with people that I knew were on my list, and he would take the papers, and I knew the president was often not sitting right behind that door there. I just about, whenever the World War II Memorial was dedicated, what, three years ago, two years ago, was invited to attend that dedication, and I was at the White House on Memorial morning, and as we were coming down the hall, General Myers and all his security, we coincided with President Bush coming the other direction. And President Bush, we we're going to be right there together, and General Myers said, Mr. President, I'd like you to meet Scotty Lingelbach, who was awake in World War II. Now, President Bush could not have been nicer or more charming to me. He took my hand and he said, I am so honored to meet you. I said, oh no, I'm the one that's honored. So then I said, Mr. President, may I ask a question? He said, yes. I said, you know, I attended President Roosevelt's D-Day press conference and what I thought was the Oval Office, because it looks like all the pictures I see today. I said, unless you have another room that looks just like the Oval Office. That man put his arm around my shoulder and said, come on, I want to show you something. Now the Myers that was with me was done, but he was taking the time to do this. But as we're walking down this corridor toward the room he wants to show me, he, I told him about delivering this presidential law, and he said, oh, we still use that room today. It's called the Situation Room, and it is where I spent the night of 9-11 with all my advisors, which I found really interesting to think we had been at that same room. One other story, and I'm going to quit. It's about your dog over here. <laughs> I, I think you call him Fava. 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 It's Fava. That we always call him. That was President Roosevelt's little <laughs> Scotty dog. And when I was at this press conference, Roosevelt, President Roosevelt was never without that dog. Fava was at the conference, and I was standing up next to a back wall, and Fallon came and ran through our legs and then along this wall, <laughs> sniffing everybody. And so I do know. Mr. Chief, let me call my phone to you. Saying this would be very difficult for me to get accepted. 
because they would prefer women who had been out of college a couple years and working before they put them into officer's training. And that even if I had good grades, a lot of extracurricular activities, and they said even if all the faculty recommended you were not guaranteed, you'll be accepted. But you know what? That was my goal. And I thought, heck, I won't be any worse off if they say no than I was before I tried. So I tried and I was accepted. So don't give up. 